Hi guys. Today we are going to discuss Nash equilibrium and dominant strategy. Now what is a Nash equilibrium and what is a dominant strategy? Now dominant strategy is basically I am doing the best I can no matter what you do or you are doing the best you can no matter what I do. Whereas on the other hand Nash equilibrium is I am doing the best I can given what you are doing or you are doing the best I can given what I am doing. Now let's understand these concepts with the help of some examples. So here we have two firms, firm A and firm B and they have two options either to advertise their product or not to advertise their product. So if we see firm A, if firm A also advertises and firm B also advertises the payoffs are 10 and 5. Now what is a payoff? Payoff is any value associated with a possible outcome. That is, if firm A also chooses to advertise and firm B also chooses to advertise, the payoff to firm A, that is firm A will get a reward or will get a profit of 10 while firm B will get a profit of 5. That is, when both of these firms choose to advertise their product, they get the payoffs 10 and 5 respectively, provided that both of them are advertising. Similarly, if we see if firm A advertises and firm B is not advertising. If firm A is advertising and firm B is not advertising, then the payoffs are 10 and 0. 15 is the payoff or 15 is the reward to form A and 0 is the reward to form B. Similarly, we can see that if form A chooses not to advertise and form B chooses to advertise, so we have the reward, the payoff to form A 6 and the payoff to form B is 8. And if both of them choose not to advertise their product, then 10 is the reward that goes to form A and 2 is the reward that goes to form B. Now the question is, which of these firms have a dominant strategy? For that, we need to consider their payoffs. Now if we consider firm A, first of all, what are the payoffs of firm A? These. These are the payoffs that belong to firm A. That is 10, 15, 6 and 10, all before the comma. And all after the comma, these values are the payoffs that goes to form B. So here, while checking whether form A has a dominant strategy or not, we need to consider its payoffs. So here, 10 and 15, these are the payoffs when the firm chooses to advertise. When firm A chooses to advertise, and when firm A chooses not to advertise, the payoffs are 6 and six and 10. Clearly we can see that 10 and 15, 10 and 15 are greater than 6 and 10 respectively, which means 10 is greater than 6 and 15 is greater than 10. That means advertising, the payoffs that uh, belong to advertising that the firm A gets when it chooses to advertise are greater than when it chooses not to advertise. And both of them, we can see 10 is greater than 6, 15 is greater than 10. That means firm A has a dominant strategy in advertising because both 10 and 15 are greater than 6 and 10 respectively. And no matter whatever firm B chooses, firm A will always choose to advertise because firm A has a dominant strategy in advertising. Now let's check whether firm B also has a dominant strategy or not. So considering the payoffs, first of all we have to consider the payoffs of firm B. So all the payoffs of the comma these belong to form B. We have 5, 0, 8 and 2. That is, when form A chooses to advertise and form B also chooses to advertise, then 5 is the payoff 
or 5 is the reward that goes to form B. And similarly, all the other cases. Now we have to check whether form B has a dominant strategy. For that, we know now the options are this way. That is, the options are now vertically. So, we have to check them vertically. That is, 5, 8, 0 and 2. And so, 5 and 8 belongs to advertising. These are the payoffs that belongs to advertising. Or that the firm gets these payoffs when the firm chooses to advertise. And these payoffs when the firm chooses not to advertise. Clearly, we can see that 5 is greater than 0 and 8 is greater than 2. That means, again, both of these are greater than both of these, respectively. That means again firm B has a dominant strategy in advertising because 5 is greater than 0 and 8 is greater than 2. Now here we are looking vertically and not horizontally. While on the other hand for form A we looked horizontally. So after all of this we can clearly say that form B also has a dominant strategy in advertising. So now if we see, both of these have a dominant strategy in advertising. Now considering that they are rational, both of these firms will choose to advertise and firm A will get a payoff of 10 and firm B will get a payoff of 5. Now let's consider a slightly different example wherein, because we all know that not all the games have dominant strategies for each player. Now let us consider this new example wherein we have just changed this one value. We have uh, written 20 instead of 10 in the previous example. Now if we consider from B's case, we have these four values. Those values 5, 0, 8 and 2, these are similar to the values that was in the previous example. That means there are no changes. Again, in this example also, firm B has a dominant strategy in advertising. Why? Because both of these values, 5 and 8, these are greater than 0 and 2 respectively. So firm B has a dominant strategy in advertising, provided that whatever firm A does, firm B will always choose to advertise. This is firm B's case. Now let us consider form A's case. So we know that these are the payoffs of form A. So we have these four payoffs. For advertising we have 10 and 15 and for not advertising we have 6 and 20 for form A. Again if we see, now we have to compare it horizontally. That is advertising versus not advertising. So 10 is greater than 6. That is fine. But 15 is not greater than 20. Which means we cannot say that form A has a dominant strategy. There is no one uh, choice in which a form would have a dominant strategy. Since form A is not having any dominant strategy, we will move to form B. Now form B is choosing to advertise, form B chooses to advertise their product. Depending on whatever form B's decision would be, the firm that is form A will take into consideration whatever form B does. So form B is advertising, now we will compare form A's payoffs which is 10 and 6. Now clearly if we have this column with us. If we have this column, because form B will always advertise. So we have this column. We have either of these two choices. Either 10 and 6 for form A. So form A will obviously choose 10. Because 10 is greater than 6. So form A will also choose to advertise their product. Provided that form B is also advertising. So this, this is Nash equilibrium. Now the logical outcome of this game is that both of these firms will advertise. Because firm A is doing the best it can given what firm B is doing and firm B is also doing its best given 
what form A is doing. I hope you have understood these concepts of Nash equilibrium and dominant strategies. Thank you.